Our original priorities for 2020 were to continue stabilizing our economy following the deep recession while restoring peace in areas confronted with security challenges. But the COVID-19 pandemic and its devastating impact on all nations meant we needed to shift gears and re-strategize. Nigerians came together as one to fight against COVID-19. It is this attitude and by the self grace of God, we continue to survive the pandemic as a nation and indeed provide leadership and example at regional and international levels. The doomsday scenario predicted for our country never came. Even as the Delta variant continues to spread, we have built the capacity we need to respond now and into the future. I will therefore appeal to Nigerians not to take COVID lightly. Adhere to public health and social measures. Put your mask on and get vaccinated. We can control this pandemic, but it requires effort on everybody's part. The investments we made in response to COVID-19 will also serve our country to tackle any future disease, outbreaks, or pandemics. Welcome back. We've got two gentlemen joining us uh, now. We've got uh, Honorable Beatrice Kaze, who is a former member of the House of Representatives and a member of the BDP, as well as Dr. Amos Gizo, who is a member of the APC. He also contested for the governorship position under the party of NDP at the time. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Let me start with you, Honorable Kaze. Um, yes, the speech has been delivered. We had an independence timeout, and so moving on, uh, many look to leadership and concerning what's being done, where are we headed. So could you give us your impression of where we are at the moment and the kind of uh, you know, trajectory and where you think we're headed in context of what you've seen? Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to join you on channels this morning again. Um, it's difficult to answer your question, particularly if one takes a look at the speech Mr. President has delivered. Uh, for me, I think we are in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's just when, when I read, when I went through that speech, when I first heard, you know, what agitated my mind is what exactly were the presidential speech writers trying to achieve with this speech? It doesn't touch on the issues that bother Nigerians. It doesn't even touch on the issues of the moment. It is incoherent in some cases. And it left, left us in the middle of nowhere. And that is exactly what we see in this government. All right, uh, Dr. Ogizo, what about you? Well, uh, I tend to differ her a little from my brother. Uh, when I look at the speech, particularly, uh, when you talk about uh, why the celebration of the 1st October, it gives hope that uh, Nigerians actually believe in unification of this country, Nigerians believe that the founding fathers who actually came to give us democracy believe in one Nigeria without looking at uh, ethnic, religious, and regions. And when it comes to celebrations like this, you see everybody is in it. Yes, we know we have a lot of daunting challenges in this country. Uh, I, in my own perspective, 
I looked at the challenges. The president was very frank in saying, yes, we had trying moments. My only take is that uh, there should be a holistic approach to these uh, trying situations, especially when he spoke about uh, the economy. Uh, we definitely know that there is a problem, the problem of inflation. And when he spoke about security, the other thing I have seen that government should be able to take a proactive uh, position is the issue that since it is known that there are people behind this, there should be no scapegoat. Efforts should be taken seriously. With, there should be justice because the outer mass of all these things is inability of uh, authorities to give justice, decisive justice, uh, no selective justice. If this is done, in this aspect, I think we are moving forward. Uh, let us believe the president, since he had said that uh, uh, they are investigating sponsors of these people who are creating problems for us. Let them be fast, let action be taken, let people be reprimanded, and let the laws take the course. There should be no scapegoat uh, situation. There should be no great cows. These are major things that yeah, I but, but Dr. Giso, is it out of place on. when, uh, just picking up on what you just said, is it out of place when people say, wait a minute, uh, he talked about sponsors of uh, um, iPub and uh, Igboho, but what about sponsors of Boko Haram? I, I, I was taking it holistically. I was not actually looking at just the issue of uh, uh, IPOP or whatever. I'm looking at the entirety of the security situation, especially uh, the Boko Haram, uh, the banditry, kidnapping, the IPOP thing. Since Nigerians, the majority of Nigerians believe in oneness of this country, my own only problem is the issue of uh, 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 justice, because it's a national check. Uh, I have seen problem in this country, especially when it comes to distribution of amenities, distribution of appointments, and whatever. That when a southerner is in government, for instance, you would discover that JC or grade one ministries or whatever are taken to the south. The same thing with when a northerner is in government. We still we have to look at this aspect of uh, governance. We should be looking at Nigeria as one, not where there are lopsidedness. Definitely, it will create problems. All right, let me ask you, Honorable Kazi, um, you may want to respond to a thing or two that you heard uh, Dr. Gizel talk about. But from what you said earlier, when you say that the president's speech didn't talk on touch on issues that concern Nigerians. What issues, in your opinion, were left out? Talk about security. The president was in Katsina State on what he calls a private visit, right in his presence with his troops against a brigade, a mobile brigade that he moves about with. About 600 boys were kidnapped right in Katsina. Talk about skyrocketing prices. I, I, I just returned from Abuja, and I found out that pure water that we used to sell for five naira now sells for 25 to 30 naira per session. Talk about unemployment. This is a government that promised that it will give stipends to our youth who are finished school, who are graduates, uh, and who have no jobs, uh, but unemployment figures are skyrocketing, even though they try to hide the figures, but we all know that uh, unemployment is worsening. Talk about kidnapping, talk about killing. Here and there, you know, people now bury in mass, and no part of this country is really scored as such. Uh, to me, those are the issues that the president should have touched I have not spoken about that education. 
I've not spoken about our roads. I've not spoken about our, 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 our health institutions. I have not spoken about the, well, the general well-being of Nigeria. These are the issues that I think our president ought to have addressed, ought to have taken us on some kind of an assessment, what he got in 2015 and the thing he's been able to improve. Uh, to me, th those important essentials were totally absent. Uh, that is why I concluded that he left us in the middle of nowhere. Okay, but about the health sector, he, he, if you look at uh, some of that, some part of that speech, he did say, if I could just read from that directly, he says, quote, already the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority is raising a $200 million fund for the initiative that will complement the Central Bank of Nigeria's ongoing 85 billion naira health sector research and development intervention support scheme for local researchers and development of vaccines and drugs to combat communicable and non-communicable diseases, including COVID-19. How about that for the health sector? You seem to forget that we are dealing with somebody who first came to contest for presidency like about 20 years ago. Uh, President Buhari first appeared on the scene to run for civilian uh, presidency in this country in the year 2003. And since that time, we know he has been blaming every other government. And you, what I mean by that is that we are dealing with somebody who finds it very easy to make all manner of promises, promises all manner of goodies, including before his arrival on the scene in 2015. But if you look at his history, what, how many of those promises has he kept? How many of them has he fulfilled? And so if we are now talking about some 20 or $200 billion funding initiative, you forget that the word initiative is just a plan. It's just a promise. It's just an intent. And we are talking of somebody who is already six years uh, in office in a, term, in a two term of eight years. If he's not been able to do anything similar to that in uh, six years, what do you think he'll be able to achieve in, uh, in, in, the, in the next two years? At the end of the next two years, it'll be another time for blaming PDP. It'll be another time for blaming Jonathan. It'll be another time for blaming President Obasanjo for not performing. And he's been here for six years. And then at the end of his tenure, we are talking of yet another promise um, of another initiative. It's all promises, my brother. I don't see anything there. Gizo, you may want to respond to this. Um, he is talking about the performance of your party over the last um, six years and counting. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. I'm not a prophet of doom. And of course, if anyone makes a promise, we should allow the time to tell. Uh, let me take the issue of uh, his in the speech where he spoke about the involvement of the youth in his government. I hope that uh, this last one and a half years that this government will be, we should be able to test the youth as he has promised. He still has time to be able to see if we are going to bring up our youth uh, to uh, a standard where they would really appreciate the speech. He has made a speech, a president's speech is like a law. So we will be watching. I am very confident that uh, he, he had given us in this country, look at the way he wants us to go with the solution. I don't believe in violence. I believe in dialogue. And he is looking at a, a dialogue-based solution to all these uh, actions against the uh, successions and agitations. I think there is a saying that says, if peace would not give us something, I think uh, a crisis would not give us. We should be able to imbibe the spirit of oneness, imbibe the spirit of being together, imbibe the spirit of believing in Nigeria, imbibe the spirit of doing things so that we will be looked different. If I had my opportunity in this country, I would definitely state this, that in our forms, issues like tribe, religion should be removed 
So okay, so just a minute. Uh, Why not? No, because what he said is that um, at the moment, in. at the moment, he says, well, six years on, uh, he's looked at what is on ground. And so he wonders that some of these uh, usually important components that the president announced in that speech that will kick on. So he's concerned, the, the Honorable Kazi is concerned that, well, look, can we actually achieve this in this time, the remaining time that he's got? Uh, because, I mean, you know, pretty soon you may just have a lot of uh, political activity kick on and there'll be a lot of focus. People that are supposed to execute may be distracted. And so he thinks, what is the assurance that these will be achieved, at least major steps will be taken within that time frame? Yes, the president is an existing president, so he has complete time for himself. He's not going in for any election, so I believe he will concentrate to see that he hands over to the next administration perfectly. He's, uh, there are governors that I have seen, I don't want to mention names, that I've seen in their states, what they have done in one year, some governors in four years have not been able to do. If there is that political will to drive what one has said, I am confident that it could be achieved between this period. And of course, he has mentioned, I said I'm not a prophet of doom, he has mentioned too that he has increased the level of uh, uh, credit to the poor and the vulnerable, to be able to kickstart businesses, small small businesses. Let's wait and see if that is done. And he had equally said he had allowed for the recruitment in the police and in the army. Let us see as these ones come to bear. He had said, he had said so many good things that I know they are achievable between the period of now and uh, one and a half years, especially as he's an exiting president. So what... Would it be out of place for the president to say, well, um, maybe to his cabinet and say, uh, listen, ladies and gentlemen, now I want to focus. I've announced, I have a, a, the speech that I made in, in terms of what else I want to deliver. So by January, if there's anybody who is thinking about going into any political office whatsoever, you may please just take a bow and go so that I know who I have left with me to deliver and as you say in politics, finish strong. Honestly, you put the words in my mouth because that was what I was just going to say. And it looks like that is his body language since he says he's going to bring youth into the administration so that they can look at the tail end of it and prepare a ground for whoever comes after that. So I just want to state clearly that uh, those of them who would be engaged in running, wanting to go in for elections, they should give way. They should just give way with a very good time so that they can bring in new hands that will work with him, those that are not interested in going into elections immediately. I think that will help Mr. President in concluding. It, some, uh, the saying says that it is not how well you start, it is how well you end. So I am sure if he has the right hands with him and if he changes certain agreements uh, that people think they are there, which he had mentioned almost everything, in this speech, if he changes and he has new people to work with him, the country will be transited better. Well, Honorable Kaze, there are those who would believe that as far as they are concerned, Nigerians can't wait for another one year or two. They want results now. Um, some of the promises that the president has made, there are things that he cannot do all by himself. For instance, when he talked about um, um, bringing a hundred million people out of poverty over the uh, over 10 years he said that was it in 2018 or so and uh, part of what he said at that at that time is that there needed to be collaboration with the states in order for that promise to be fulfilled uh, across policy line uh, across party lines beyond the politics of it do you see the kind of collaboration necessary between the federal and state governments to ensure that this promise of pulling Nigerians out of poverty, creating an enabling environment for jobs to be created by this private sector. Do you see that collaboration happening strongly enough? When you run to be a president of a huge republic like the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 
and you run for 12 years before you actually take office as president, you ought to have your plans, you ought to have your game in your hands, you ought to know that becoming the president of a country like Nigeria entails working with not only the governors, the National Assembly ministers, and indeed even local government chairman. Are, you, are we not trying to say that President Buhari came up to become a president of Nigeria without any plan? Didn't he know that he would work with the governors before promising Nigerians that by a, a, within the next 10 years we will be out of poverty, 100 million Nigerians will be out of poverty? Didn't he know about it? Didn't he, didn't he think for himself that he needs to collaborate, that he needs uh, to get people on board uh, irrespective of party, tribe, or region, or religion? Didn't he think about it? Uh, like you said, actually I'm one of those that have lost faith with uh, the presidency. That is if I had any faith in the first place because I never trusted, I never believed, and by the grace of God we have been vindicated uh, that Buhari would perform, we never believed that, and it is shown clearly. I mean, you are asking, we are talking about somebody who collaborate. When he came into office, he gave us December 2015, when Boko Haram will be away. But as it is today, Nigeria is the third rank on the global terrorism index. Nigeria is the third worst country, apart from Afghanistan, and then, apart from Afghanistan and uh, Iraq, but then coming after Nigeria is Somalia and Syria, which have been in a war for 10 years. They are a bit better than Nigeria. This is coming, this is under a man who promised us Boko Haram will be off the table. Honorable Kaze, Kaze or, or the Honorable, the, the issues that you are raised, no doubt they are pertinent. But the question I'm asking is, okay, for instance, just as we, we all agree, you would agree as well, that the, gov, the president does not have authority over the state governors. That if the collaboration is going to happen, it's going to be a two-way street, irrespective of whether they are APC-governed APC states or PDP-governed states. So that's why I'm asking, what kind of collaboration would you be looking for, irrespective of party interests? between the federal government My and the state view. governments, because ultimately My it is about the people, not about the politics or the politicians. My position is this. Whatever collaboration we are able to make depends on the ingenuity of the leader, depends on his sagacity, depends on his ability to reach out, his ability to show fairness, his ability to carry everybody along. But commands the respect of all stakeholders on board. Um, you just asked the question, when you spoke about um, EPOP, when you spoke about Sunday Oboho, uh, uh, Oboho, and we all know that even before that, they, they, there has been, there has been a Boko Haram, and we, we had him say nothing. A man who behaves like that, how do you expect that everybody will come under him? When he doesn't show fairness, when he doesn't show that he's willing to carry everybody along, you know, when in his mentality, in his senses, and in his action, all he wants and all he cares for are his herdsmen, is the modernization of Nigeria, and that is all he cares for. Who's going to work under such a man? Well, so Honorable Kaze, if I could just read out some part of that speech to you, where he talked about security, and he says that earlier this year, he had launched this integrated national security and waterways protection infrastructure which is the Deep Blue Project. And uh, he says it's designed to secure Nigeria's waterways in the Gulf of Guinea. And he's happy to inform Nigerians that they've taken delivery of key assets for this project and very soon the country will feel the impact. In the Northeast region, he says that about 8,000 Boko Haram terrorists have surrendered. And then to support our surge in fighting banditry, the armed forces are recruiting over 17,000 personnel across all ranks. And then he approved 10,000 police officers to be recruited into the police for the next six years. And then they've also, uh, the Air Force platforms have acquired for the past three years, uh, they've started arriving, the equipment they have ordered. So, you know, listening to you, it, it does appear as though you're saying they're just sitting on their hands. But all of this suggests that they're doing something. Well, 
they're doing something on paper, they're doing something in the speech he read, but on ground, you are talking about deep blue seas. I'm talking about the paper, hinterland. Actually. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about Katina. I'm talking about Kaduna. It's not to say I'm not concerned about what is happening in our international borders or in our seaways. I mean, it's not, that's not the point. But the point is that if bandits can come to Mr. President's home state and forces the governor of his home state to close all schools, if bandits can come and carry 600 boys in Katina School, in the president of their, in the presence of their son, the president of this country, who is secure. I mean, let us not kind of theorize these things. Let us not intellectualize these things. Let us look at the reality on ground. Before this man came, what was the situation? Has it not grown worse? What, is, what are we really talking about here? And is it to, if he it, if it speaks of recruitment, if he speaks of $1, a security fund, and yet Nigerians are burying their dead in thousands. What are we really talking about here? We are not just talking about plans. We want to see better security for this country. And like he actually said, the essence of government is the security and welfare of citizens. But that is totally lacking in this government. And if we have reached a state that governors, the defense minister, and when I say governors, including the governor of Katsina, including the governor of Zampara, including the defense minister, if they're able to come out and say, look, Nigerians should come out and defend themselves, to my mind, that is a vote of no confidence on the security apparatus. All right. Le let me take that to Dr. Gizzo to get his response. So, well, Dr. Gizzo, he says, look, all of those measures that the president has announced on security notwithstanding, but as he stands, if all that kidnapping activities are happening and if it continues, yeah, we know you're not the prophet of doom, but it says, look, this will spell doom if they continue this way. Yes. Um, I was opportune some few months back to be in Zamfara. It was very scary after taking my flight from Abuja to Sokoto. Moving from Sokoto to Zamfara was a nightmare. But I had said earlier that uh, solutions to this is to take it holistically. Solution to this is to have the political will to deal with it. When they took a decision in Zamfara, shortly after I had left the state, we saw what had happened to the bandits. They themselves had to move out of that state because of the situations taken. These are the kind of actions. It should not be selectively done in a state. Let the state now become a mini experience and let it be done completely in other areas. I think we will be able to sweep off uh, criminality in this country if we take a holistic approach to it like it is done there. Uh, our state in particular, my state, is one of the worst hit uh, in this kind of uh, attacks. And uh, if there is truly an attempt, just like the Mr. President has put on ground, we will want those situations, I mean, the, the, the steps taken to move out of Abuja and go to the various states. Nigeria is in component. But let me look at what the other aspect that you are asking in terms of uh, uh, synergy between states and federal government. There is the Council of State, for God's sake. Uh, once people are in government, we should look beyond party lines. We should be thinking that once you are elected in a state, whether at the platform of uh, the APC or PDP or APGA or any other party, once you emerge, you become the governor of the people. You are no longer a governor for a party. Uh, I am an advocate of uh, an all-inclusive uh, government because whatever resources you have is a resources for the people of Nigeria it is not for a particular party it's therefore when governors come in whether from PDP or APC at the Council of State they should look at the lives of the citizenry without considering party party becomes just a minority I mean a majority or minority in a place 
when in a particular constituency, let's say local government, state or federal, they win election, you just become majority, does not really mean that there are no other people existing. In most cases, it's even the majority that are being marginalized in this kind of situation. So I expect that uh, governance should be the government of the people, and of the people has nothing to do with party. Once you are in government, you should support government. If you are a governor of PDP because APC is in government, you should be able to support the policies or you come together and make up a policy. So I believe that what the president has put on ground, let it move, let him get new hands that will help him propel this one to success. And we would see change. Change can come within a year. I, I believe that one. All right, then Dr. Amos Gizo is a member of the APC, but before then he uh, was the governorship candidate of the NDP in Plateau State. And uh, we also have had uh, Honorable uh, Beatrice Kaze, who is a former member of the House of Representatives and a member of the PDP. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us today on the program. Thank you.